Plato has this wonderful thing in the Phaedrus where there is the charioteer holding the two horses and the horses are reason and passion and he's kind of controlling them as they go up and down. And frankly, that's a little bit what we do. We see their passions, we see their reason, we see their energy, we see their commitments, and then we try to find a way with them. It was just revolutionary to me that there was a school like this that could exist. This atmosphere that encourages great thinking and is just a community of conversation. Who are you and what do you think? I wanted to be this sort of East Village writer who was alive in a certain sort of downtown culture. And I saw Sarah Lawrence at 25 minutes outside the city and I remember feeling immediately I was in the right place. Sarah Lawrence has been ahead of the curve from the very beginning. In the 1920s, Sarah Lawrence created a form of education that was radical, educating, active, inquiring problem solvers. To understand that knowledge could be adventurously pursued, that's what the education is still today. I think it might be interesting to bring in more of what I studied with the World War II information. Conference work creating a collaborative conversation that extends over a period of time is absolutely central. You don't just have a student coming to you because they're panicked about taking an exam. You have these other, you know, interactions where students are incredibly excited about something that they have happened upon, you know. More formal. It's a little more formal and because her You can take out an idea and say these are the pieces what that might mean is looking at Middle Eastern gender politics and contemporary poetry. How do these fit together? She wants you to look at it just a little bit differently. Sarah Lawrence continues to be, at kind of the DNA level, the school that we all remember. The place where the most curious, passionate, resourceful people go to develop the capacity to take themselves into the world. Adaptability, belief in yourself, the ability to understand connections, the depth, the rigor, all of that is transferable to the workplace. What kind of compound the meadow is attached to is fine. What I do now is helping companies and clients navigate the sort of public policy landscape here in D.C. and as well as international development, international finance. Just a professional parallel to what I was doing at Sarah Lawrence. It was the driving force behind all the decisions that I was making. Sarah Lawrence recently started an intensive entrepreneurial program, the SL Seeds. Sarah Lawrence is strengthening their connection to internships in New York. My sophomore year, I made my transition into anthropology, and that's what really set my soul ablaze. I went to Australia, and I studied Aboriginal culture. And when I got back, I did an internship at Sesame Street, and that is where I work now. My family is an immigrant family. I always sort of knew that, that it would be a challenge to, to come to college. And then I was offered a wonderful scholarship from Sarah Lawrence. I mean, I cried that day to know that I wasn't going to be an enormous burden on my family. I'm actually working as a contributing editor and writer for a newsletter about the Greek and Roman classics. Sarah Lawrence is leading me down that path, and I'm hoping that a job will come out of what I'm actually doing now. Sarah Lawrence's brand is steeped in risk-taking and uh, being on the cutting edge. Without question, it was the formative place for me, and it was just a constant sort of uh, Rubik's Cube of problem-solving. I could have a set of tools that apply to actual real life. We have a consulting firm that primarily focuses on lobbying the federal government and state governments and international governments around the world. We are really problem solvers, and this is the Sarah Lawrence way.
Sarah Lawrence produces writers and other very creative artists. It also has produced large numbers of lawyers, engineers, doctors. And from the very beginning, students begin to generate hypotheses, review the literature, collect data, analyze the data, and then ultimately present it. For me, I was trying to consider if that counted as self-efficacy because you should. I have about five students right now who work with me at NYU Med School on a variety of brain imaging studies. Perfect, just what you were doing. The most important thing for us at Sarah Lawrence is that we know them in terms of the way they think. We know what's important to them. That's what a Don is for, first and foremost. It is helping students realize that being uncertain fa and facing difficulty is not something to be put paid to as quickly as possible, but to learn to engage with it. Because you've decided that something is so interesting that you want to be part of it. I walked into my first year studies and I remember feeling like my ideas mattered. With Sarah Lawrence, that first week of classes, I thought, wow, I can really do anything I want here. There are definitely just, you know, all different kinds of communities at Sarah Lawrence. My sophomore year, I lived in Warren Green, which is like a, it's a co-op of 13 students who all live together as sustainably as possible. It was clear to me from the moment I came that people were so serious about teaching. How did that seem to you? Uh, a little clunky, but good. Yeah, this is, um, I think... You know, they do all kinds of wonderful things outside in the world. They're leaders in their fields, and yet teaching is not seen as separate. as we are going to find out in the flashback, she is in love with who? Article. Uh -huh. And how did, how, did they meet at the prom or what? <laughs> this is where I smuggle in large chunks of Spencer's Fairy Queen. And students eat it up because they don't think they're reading the Fairy Queen. They think they're reading gossip. Would that work for you? Would you like to be in a world in which you're narrated by Thomas Mann? For a college that specializes in helping people to realize meaningful lives, and meaningful these days means contributing to other human beings. I really use the novel as, as a mode of enhancing people's capacity for empathy. He does it lovingly often. But the issue is, what are you invested in? How do you make it effective to change the world? These are the truths that really matter. One of the really incredible things I got to do while I was at Sarah Lawrence was enroll in a class that was half Sarah Lawrence students and half inmates at Bedford Hills Maximum Security Women's Prison. It was a journalism class, but I was really taking it from a psychological perspective. Yeah, I looked at poetry and politics with respect to China, and I was so frustrated that I didn't have any background in China. Very nice. The great thing that happens when you're in a place like Sarah Lawrence is that you can grab a frustration like that say, hey, what would happen if I go really, really deep, immersing in China? I took three students to the eastern Himalayas. We had to hike up 14, 15,000 feet up to these villages along uh, three rivers that's very, very remote. At the time, I didn't know that it was practically unheard of for undergraduate students to be so immediately integrated into a multinational field-based research project. It's about putting yourself into whatever choice you're making, you're crafting your own path. Nothing I say is accepted at face value. It's very much a process of crafting us into the scholars that we do have the potential to be. So what part of the settlement mm. is Milton most concerned about? The key bit is much remains to conquer still. Mm. I think what attracts the students is precisely the desire to engage in, with that kind of intellectual depth. At the end of the day, you come away with such amazing gifts, this arsenal of abilities and how those can be expressed in different ways. It's like a, a thickening of the skin, I think, that will, will last someone a lifetime. Let's be
certain that we're aiming at the correct target. Vanish the seriousness. This is not a problem. Yes. You know, it, well, it's certainly not a life-threatening problem. <laughs> okay, so let's do it again. As Sam Beckett famously said, fail again, fail better. That's what rehearsing a play is all about, really. <laughs> Moving forward by incremental steps. Keep listening. Yeah. Don't act. The whole challenge of Shakespeare is about making the language your own. I'm hoping to extend their imaginations and release something very exciting in them. Beast was then that made you break this enterprise to me. Challenging oneself creates a person who is ready to go out into the world and do what it is that they feel passionate about. I took a sociology course with Patricia Macias. She told me, it's like, look, Liz, critical thinking is like a muscle. The more you read, the more you practice, the bigger it will get. As a first generation college student, I thought I was just going to Sarah Lawrence to finish my BA, and now I'm in a PhD program. Some institutions exist in the world to call people to their better selves. Sarah Lawrence calls people to a better self that turns on the idea of equality, freedom, self-expression. I think it comes down to this. What you think really matters, and what you do really matters. When I graduated, I worked at SCOTUS blog, which covers the Supreme Court. Obamacare was argued, gay marriage and affirmative action and immigration. It was incredibly exciting. Sarah Lawrence gave me the skills that I use every day. It is better suited than any other school that I've ever come across to manifest itself in success in this sort of nonlinear space that is the professional world now. Now is the time for everyone who cares about Sarah Lawrence to join with us to ensure its future. Translating extraordinary education into work and service in the world. 50, you want to make about 50 grams of blood. There's so much of what we've done over the past. Year. There isn't another place like it. Sarah Lawrence, she's like a sister. I loved Bates. I loved my teachers, my classes. I loved the tea house. I loved a midnight breakfast. It is like magic, it's like fairy dust, which I'm perfectly fine with. This education is a gift you will be unwrapping for the rest of your life. When they get at the deepest roots of what we believe and why we believe it, they're able to then understand where their voice fits into the world, the kinds of actions they want to take. Which side of history do we want to be on? We want to go out in the world and try to make it a better place figuring it out as we step into it and making the path by walking it. This is their moment. The world is listening. 